Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to The Fold. You read the title, you saw the thumbnail. You chose to invest the next 10 minutes of your time learning how to choose your first set of motorcycle gear. I know all you squidlers are going to perform squidly behavior. That's just what a squid is going to do. But the key is to keep it safe and wearing your proper gear. You can replace a broken clutch lever or turn signal, but you cannot replace your head and brain. Maybe one day humankind will reach that level of medical innovation where your loved ones can go buy a new brain from the freezer section at Costco while you're held up in the hospital in a vegetative state. But until that day comes, it is probably wise to protect the one you've got. So without further ado, let's talk about how to properly buy your first set of motorcycle gear. Today's video is sponsored by our website, yamminoob.co. We sell the best motorcycle gear for every type of rider, and we only sell products from brands that I use and trust. So if you're in the market for your first set of motorcycle gear or looking to upgrade, head over to yamminoob.co where every purchase gets you entered to win a giveaway motorcycle as well. Head over to the site and learn more. So when it comes to buying motorcycle gear, the piece that should come first and foremost is your helmet. Buying a helmet that is safe, comfortable, and fits your riding style may be a little more involved than you think because not all helmets are created equal. The first decision you'll need to make when shopping for a helmet is determining which style is best suited for you and your style of riding. Right at the top, I will say we always recommend a full face helmet. It provides the highest level of safeguard against potential impacts from accidents, as well as shields from weather and wind. Some full face helmets are modular, allowing the chin bar to be lifted for added convenience. Dual sport or adventure helmets, which fall under this category, have a peak for sun protection, and they also come with removable face shields, enabling the rider to use goggles or glasses, especially beneficial for off-road riding. In contrast, open face or three-quarters helmets cover the head but leave the face exposed, offering less protection against impacts, wind, and rain. They are less common, typically favored by riders with a retro style. On the other end of the spectrum, half helmets are minimalistic, often worn only for legal compliance. Popular among Harley or Cruiser enthusiasts, they sit atop the head, providing no protection for the chin, face, or back of the head. We do not recommend these. Wear a full face. After you choose which style of helmet you want, it is best to compare the safety ratings of each. The prevalent certifications include DOT, ECE, and Snell. DOT, primarily applicable in the United States, mandates that helmets meet safety criteria set by the U.S. Department of Transportation. These criteria encompass impact testing, penetration resistance, and effectiveness of retention systems. Helmets meeting DOT standards bear a distinctive sticker indicating their adherence to these regulations. ECE, on the other hand, is a safety certification widely recognized in Europe, Asia, and some parts of the Americas. Helmets with ECE certification must meet safety standards established by the Economic Commission for Europe. These standards encompass rigorous testing for impact absorption, strength of retention systems, and other safety aspects. When shopping for a helmet, it is typically advisable to seek out one with both ECE and DOT ratings. Helmets undergo extensive testing, including impact trials at varying speeds and angles, penetration resistance, and assessment of chin strap effectiveness. We always make sure to highlight that on the product pages at Amity Beko because we're really big on ECE safety ratings. So the long and the short of it is make sure your helmet has an ECE sticker. That means it's going to be safe. Something else we like to highlight as is not always considered by new helmet buyers is the shape of the helmet interior. Helmets come in round, intermediate oval, and long oval shapes. Intermediate oval being the most common and most applicable, but if you know you've got a head that is rounder or longer than most, it will be worthwhile to pursue a helmet designed for that head shape to maximize your safety and comfort. If you can, get someone to take a photo of your head from the top down and you will quickly be able to identify whether you have a round, intermediate oval, or a long oval head. The last thing to consider when buying a helmet is to compare the amount of features each has. Some features commonly found in helmets are optimized ventilation systems for maximum airflow, an anti-fog pinlock visor, recessed compartments for an audio system, a drop-down sun visor, or photochromatic lenses. More expensive helmets may not be any safer than cheaper helmets sporting the same safety ratings, but many have more of these features. More expensive helmets are often made with more premium materials, which can make them more comfortable, lighter, and quieter. A super popular entry-level helmet that is packed with features that I like to recommend to new riders is the Speed & Strength SS900. It's a full face helmet that is DOT and ECE rated, lightweight, and super affordable. It's one of those things where I'm like, there's no excuse to not ride without a helmet, especially this one. It's like 110 bucks. You've got that kind of cash to protect your brain. I promise. After you've got your helmet acquired, the next piece of gear you're going to need are a nice set of motorcycle gloves. Motorcycle gloves are designed specifically to improve your grip on the machine's controls, as well as provide protection from impact and abrasion. Motorcycle gloves vary in the degree of protection they offer, the durability of materials used, and the amount of features they provide. And think about it this way. If you're going to drop your bike or you're going to go down on your bike, your hands are usually the first things to go out towards the ground, so you want to make sure they're protected. A good set of gloves will use leather, oftentimes goatskin or kangaroo, for the areas that need protection from abrasion like the palms and the 
underside of your fingers. Gloves use a hard knuckle protector at the top of the glove. They often use a breathable mesh material to improve airflow and keep your hands cool. Alternatively, gloves designed for cold and wet weather will have a waterproof exterior and insulated liner. As an added feature, you may find some motorcycle gloves offer touchscreen compatible fingertips for added convenience. When choosing gloves, you'll be able to choose a style best suited for your style of riding and intended application. For sporty riding in the canyons or track days, you'll want a high level of protection and oftentimes a full gauntlet glove. For cruising around town, you can likely get away with a glove that's more stylish and offers less intensive protection. Of course, there are gloves for every style like dirt riding, adventure riding, and touring. If you were waiting for the Yami recommendation, the EVS Assen Street Glove are a great all-around pair of motorcycle gloves that we've seen great sales on for the store. A riding jacket is another really important piece of riding gear. A riding jacket covers a large portion of your body and offers protection from serious road rash should you go down in a crash. In case of a slide or fall, the tough materials like leather or textile used in these jackets help prevent painful road injuries. So you should seek out jackets with reinforced section at the elbows, shoulders, and the back as these areas are more prone to impacts. Many riding jackets also feature integrated armor or padding. This strategically placed protection absorbs and disperses the force during a crash, diminishing the chance of fracture or severe injuries. So you should pay attention to the quality and the type of the armor. Some jackets come equipped with CE certified armor, indicating it meets stringent safety standards. Weather protection is also an important aspect of a good riding jacket, as being wet and cold makes it a lot harder to ride safely on your motorcycle. Riding jackets often incorporate weatherproofing elements such as weatherproof membranes or removable liners. These components keep you dry in wet conditions and warm in colder weather, ensuring year-round usability. Ventilation systems like zippered vents help regulate temperature and airflow during warm weather rides. When selecting a riding jacket, the fit is crucial. It should be snug but not restrictive, allowing for free movement. Remember, it's designed to be worn while you're on the motorcycle, so it's not gonna feel ultimately comfortable when you're just walking around. Ensure that the sleeves adequately cover your wrist and the jacket's length extends past your waist when seated on the motorcycle to shield against wind and rain exposure. Your riding style should also influence your jacket choice. Different styles cater to different types of riding. Sport bike enthusiasts may prefer jackets with a sleek aerodynamic design, while cruiser riders may gravitate towards classic retro style leather jackets. Adventure riders may opt for super nerdy, versatile, mostly seasonal functional jackets, and while humorously put, some riders might sport unconventional styles. The Revit Eclipse 2 is an awesome affordable riding jacket that can be used by pretty much any style of rider from fast boys to cruiser dudes. It's also imperative to invest in a nice set of motorcycle riding boots. You may have been able to get away with a pair of work boots during your MSF course, but motorcycle specific boots are a total game changer for both safety and functionality on your bike. Primarily, these boots are designed to provide essential safeguarding for your feet and ankles. In the unfortunate event of a mishap during a maneuver or high speed incident, riding boots offer strong defense against abrasion impact that can aid in preventing injuries. They often incorporate reinforced sections in the toes, heels, and ankles, frequently featuring armor inserts or rigid plastic caps to effectively absorb and disperse those impact forces. Ankle support is a really vital feature of riding boots. The high top design and robust construction provide stability to the ankle joint, reducing the likelihood of twists or fractures during sudden stops, sharp turns, or accidents. This support is especially crucial for maintaining control of your motorcycle. The choice of materials in riding boots significantly influences their protective capabilities. High quality boots are typically crafted from resilient materials such as leather, synthetic leather, or textiles. While leather offers excellent resilience, resistance to abrasion, modern synthetic materials strike a balance between strength and weight, making them suitable for various riding styles and conditions. Many brands also make motorcycle shoes now that offer protection that is far superior to traditional tennis shoes or a work boot, but they're not as rigid or cumbersome as a traditional riding boot. These motorcycle shoes offer flexibility if you intend on spending time walking around between riding. The Revit Aero Shoes or Alpine Star Sector are both great options for entry-level riders or experienced riders who want a motorcycle-specific protection and a more more minimalistic low-key style. For intense riding, the Alpine Stars SMX S boots are a great option as well. They are my preferred footwear of choice when riding a motorcycle. One of the most slept on pieces of motorcycle riding gear are riding pants. Squids will spend hundreds of dollars on carbon fiber helmets and then still ride their R6 in joggers and tennis shoes. Not wise. Riding pants are gonna offer abrasion protection that far surpasses what you would likely find in traditional jeans or pants. They are typically constructed from materials like leather, textile, or synthetic fabrics that offer high abrasion resistance. This helps protect the rider's skin in case of a slide or a fall. Many riding pants come with built-in armor or padding at critical areas such as the knees or hips. This additional protection helps absorb or distribute impact forces during a crash. 
Many companies that are making riding pants or riding jeans to the layperson may look indistinguishable from a normal pair of pants, so you don't have to feel like a dork walking around in leather pants should you ride your motorcycle to a public function. For discreet protection, the Scorpion Exo covert riding jeans offer abrasion protection thanks to their Kevlar lining, while still having the look and feel of normal denim jeans. For more advanced protection, the 4SR Club Sport motorcycle jeans not only use Kevlar fiber, but also have a protective insert on the knees and hips. Dude, we have sold so many of these. I was looking at our sales report the other day. People love these Forest Hill Club Sport pants, and I do too, they're great. The Revit ones are really great too. A helmet, boots, jacket, and pants and gloves will have you covered in regards to basic set of riding gear. When you're shopping for your first motorcycle, make sure to set aside at least 500 bucks or so to get the proper gear as well. There will always be the opportunity to level up your gear as you gain more experience and more seat time, or you need more specialized equipment for a unique riding style, but you don't want to have to replace your gear after six months because you bought the cheapest stuff possible. And remember, when you're investing in good gear, it's the type of thing where we hope you never use it, but I do hope you have it. We have sizing guides on yamminoob.co that will show you how to measure yourself for all major pieces of gear because making sure everything fits correctly is imperative for each piece of effectiveness. If you intend on doing any long distance bike travel, having additional waterproof gear is incredibly advantageous. Being wet and cold sucks in general, but being wet and cold and being beaten down by wind at 60 miles an hour on a motorcycle absolutely sucks. Having waterproof gear is also not really that expensive as many rain jackets and rain pants are lightweight and baggy and meant to be worn over your existing gear. So the lack of abrasion resistance and materials and armor padding makes them pretty inexpensive as far as motorcycle gear goes. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. I hope this helped you along in your journey of motorcycling. That is really always the goal at the end of the day to get as many people safely enjoying life on two wheels as possible. And if you're shopping around for your first set of gear, we have a great selection of Yami approved products on yamminoob.co. Links down below, as well as many resources to make sure as you're educated and possible in your decision. Be sure to subscribe to get all the best motorcycle content beamed right into your optical lobe. Fact. The mantis shrimp, a marine crustacean, boasts one of the most sophisticated visual systems in the animal kingdom. With trinocular vision and the ability to see polarized light, they can perceive depth, distance, and a spectrum of colors and patterns beyond human capability. Goodbye. Ah, oh, I love being here inside of the warm embryonic fluid of Valentino Rossi. Me and him just sharing foods together. Maybe he's gonna eat some pizza or some pasta here in the hills of Tavulia. But you know where else it's nice and warm and cozy is this next episode of Yammy Noob you can click on right over here. I'd love for you to watch it. But anyways, I'm gonna stay here hanging out. Me and him might go onto the track later, but I'll catch you guys later.